Hey guys, Tam from Bike Bug here with another video. Today's video I'm pretty excited about. The sun's shining, it's a beautiful Sydney day as you can see, and I get to go out and play on this new Cannondale CAD 13. Let's crack on, shall we? So the CAD 13 is the latest in a long line of extremely popular alloy road bikes from Cannondale, which all fall under the CAD series umbrella. The company does say that this version of the CAD is faster, lighter and more comfortable than its predecessor, the CAD 12. The bike companies always say that, don't they? Let's take a look at some of the tech features that back up this claim to see if that uh, stacks up. According to Cannondale, quote, with every new CAD we design, speed increases. The same can't be said for weight, end quote. Starting with the speed side of that equation, the CAD 13 features a few notable aero features which make the bike pretty slippery through the air indeed. Firstly, you've got these drag reducing tube shapes. As you can see, the CAD 13 frame features highly truncated airfoil tube shapes that are said to offer the same weight and equal or better stiffness than round tubes, but can actually reduce drag by up to 30%. There's also some sleek and subtle cable integration. The cables neatly route internally through the frame, which of course is more aero than having them um, external. Second thing is the weight of the bike. Now Cannondale are the aluminium experts and they say that the Smartform C1 premium alloy that they've used to craft the CAD 13 is the lightest, most sophisticated aluminium construction available. And I gotta say, it's a pretty damn light machine for a metal bike. Now back in the day, alloy bikes used to get a bit of a bad rap for being overly harsh and unforgiving on the road, and for being not quite as adept at sucking up all the bumps and little rattles as carbon. The CAD series though has earned a reputation for its surprisingly smooth ride. In fact, Cannondale claims that the CAD 13 offers an even smoother ride than its predecessors, thanks to a newly designed save rear triangle, which you can see basically describes the dropped rear stays, an integrated uh, seat binder, and also a 27 knot seat post. Putting all those pieces of the puzzle together, Cannondale says that the CAD 13 is basically the speediest, the smoothest, the best handling, and the finest performing aluminium race bike on the planet. Big claim, and I won't be able to actually put it through any proper road racing abuse myself. However, I am looking forward to a bit of a solo hit out where I can put the uh, CAD 13 through its paces. So enough chat, let's get on with it, shall we? like that bike super fun yeah I think I, I mentioned this as I rolled in there but it's a hell of a bike I really enjoyed riding that round Oatley Park here this afternoon um, probably the first thing I noticed and everyone talks about this uh, with the CAD series is just how smooth they seem to ride uh, alloy used to have a reputation of being you know really rattly and and quite harsh on bumpy roads and admittedly around here is is hot mix so I didn't hit anything too gnarly but it was really really smooth on the road it didn't sort of bounce or rattle um, at times it was hard to tell I was wasn't on just a, a carbon bike to be honest it gives it any of the the carbon um, frames that I've ridden recently quite a run for their money uh, the other thing is how responsive it is it really did jump forward um, when you're out of the saddle any sort of uh, acceleration or or power through the pedals seemed to result in a fair amount of forward momentum straight away. Again, I wasn't, you know, in a in a in a bunch finish or anything, but it seemed to to accelerate really fast, and I could see this performing super well in your your local crits. Got to say that all these parts, again, not a long term test, but just on the day they performed really really admirably. I mean, Altegra these days is a top class group set. Obviously, one 
notch down from Dura Ace, but it really performs quite exceptionally. Um, I ride DI2 on my own bike at the moment, so going back to cables um, was a change, but honestly, I, I still really like the feel of cables. It feels a whole more, lot more real, um, a lot more classic, and you're, you're sort of, I don't know, in some way more connected to the bike than, than with electronic shifting. Um, and, and to be honest, all of those things put together for you know mid 4000s in terms of price, um, you've got a cracking deal on this bike. The version I'm riding today is the Ultegra disc model. It does, comes kitted out with Shimano's Ultegra Hydro disc set, um, a Cannondale 1 crank, Fulcrum Racing 900 DB wheels, um, the handlebars, the stem, the seat post are all spec'd in-house, um, and saddle duties are uh, looked after um, by Prologo and its Nago RS STN model, which I did find pretty comfortable for a stock saddle um, fresh out of the box. So with all the money that you save from buying this bike off the shelf, you know, an equivalent carbon version, uh, you know, Ultegra top end road bike is definitely not going to be under 5k. Um, I would look at specking this out just with little extra bits and pieces, maybe your preference of bars, stem, um, and then eventually upgrading to, you know, a higher end wheel set. And this is a bike that's really going to last you quite a while. There's also the main benefit of this bike and that's buying alloy versus carbon. Aluminium is cheaper to produce than carbon and therefore cheaper for you to buy. It's harder, it's hardier I should say, and less likely to break in a crash or from a direct impact. And even if it does, it's more than likely a little easier for you to repair or it's cheaper for you to replace entirely. Um, another aspect is that unlike carbon, aluminium is 100% recyclable, which is good news for those who are more environmentally minded among us. Maybe the only downsides for me on this bike, exactly how it looks here, is the handlebars. They were maybe a little wide for my personal preference. I'm usually running a, a 40, 40 or thereabouts. I think these are a 44, maybe a little wider than I'm used to. But again, that's something that you could change for quite cheap um, to modify it exactly to your specifications. I'd probably chuck on a slightly longer stem as well maybe 120 and of course uh, get rid of any extra steerer space but these are all personal preferences it's no um, no negative feedback for how the bike itself performed out there today just trying to think if there's anything I've forgotten um, oh yeah the cl tire clearance on this bike is pretty sizable I think these are 25 millimeter um, Rubino pros but Cannondale says there's room for up to 30 millimeters of rubber on the CAD 13. You might even be able to go, you know, slightly larger depending on your brand of tire, um, which would, you know, it's not quite a gravel bike, but you'd be able to take this on some pretty rough roads with more than 30 mils of rubber. Adding to the sort of adventure credentials of the CAD 13 is the fact that it's fully fender ready. Um, so if you live anywhere wet or sloppy, um, on the rear stays, they're, they're there when you want them and they're gone when you don't. At Bikebug, we offer the CAD 13 in a 105 disc version as well, which features the exact same frame that you see here, a slightly different um, colorway, um, at a reduced price, of course, with the lower spec group set. All right, so wrapping things up, the Cannondale CAD 13 Ultegra disc is certainly a whole lot of bike for the price. And if you're looking for something a little different for your next racing bike, perhaps outside the, uh, the world of carbon fiber, then this might just be the bike for you. It's enough from me. You can check out the CAD 13 on our website for all the nitty gritty info um, and see what sizes and, and such that we have in stock at the moment. Or if you wanna see more videos like this, please uh, subscribe to our Bike Bug YouTube channel and like the video, of course. Anyway, I reckon I might go keep testing this bike out a little more for all for research purposes, of course. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time.